Through this program, Holiness in the Pauline Family, we, the daughters of St. Paul, wish to bring you our pioneer Paulines, men and women who have gone before us, spreading the fragrance of good news through the modern means of communications. The Pauline family consists of five religious congregations, four secular institutes, and one association of Pauline cooperators. The first congregation, Society of St. Paul for Priests and Brothers, was founded in 1914. A year later, Blessed James Alberione, the founder, began the feminine branch, namely Daughters of St. Paul. All the other institutions came into being at a later stage, as and when the founder felt the need of the contemporary society. Though everything was clear in his mind, he prayed over his initiatives and sought advice from his spiritual director in all his ventures. Our pioneer brothers and sisters have travelled in time and history, experiencing poverty and challenges on the way. Today, we take pride in their accomplishments in different parts of the world as we render our services in 53 nations, the fruit of their hard work and commitment. What we want to focus here is their unimaginable strength and courage that sustain them in spite of their weak physique, in spite of their lack of academic preparations. They have contributed much. They have proclaimed the good news with zeal and love. They have sowed seeds of love and enthusiasm for the word of God. What motivated them to forge ahead to their goal? in spite of the obstacles that they faced on their way? Let us meet them one by one, and we hope that you will be inspired by their journeys. Venerable Mother Scholastica Rivata, God found a fine pearl and handed it to James Alberione, the founder of the Poland family. He received this fine pearl to begin the congregation of the pious disciples of the Divine Master. This fine pearl was none other than Venerable Mother Mary Scholastica Rivata. She was born on 12th July 1897 at Gorene, Italy, to Antonio Rivata and Lucia Alexandria. At her baptism, she was named Ursula in memory of her paternal and maternal grandmothers. For two years, Ursula enjoyed the loving attention of her parents, after which she had three other siblings, namely Giuseppina, 1899, Clotilda, 1900, and Giacomo, the youngest, in 1903. Everything seemed going well as the family grew in number Joy and happiness marked the family. But this joy was overshadowed by the death of her mother Lucia on 3rd July 1903. Ursula missed the kisses of her mother on her sixth birthday. At this tender age, she had to play the dual roles of a daughter and elder sister. This was her first and great suffering. In 1904, her father married Giuseppe Bartoletto. It was difficult for her 
to accept someone else in her mother's place. But she committed herself to follow her example, admiring her dedication in raising her and her sisters, caring for them not only physically but also spiritually. Little Giacomo Ursula's youngest brother died at 10 months of age. Good at studies, Ursula was awarded for being the topper in her class. She was beautiful and full of vitality, habitually joyful and active. She seemed like an angel. She knew how to get along with her companions. She was sincere and straightforward. A good singer, she was active in her parish choir. She had a great love for the Eucharist. Whenever she went to the church, she looked at the tabernacle door, which depicted the picture of Jesus, telling his disciples, Come to me. She always was attracted by this invitation of the Divine Master. Ursula grew in an atmosphere of nature and grace in that small town of Gorene. She had a great thirst for knowledge and learning, but she was not given the opportunity for further studies beyond elementary grades. She liked reading and did it during the night. During her adolescence and youth, she worked in the fields and in silk factory as a seasonal hired worker. She was also employed by a wealthy family as a domestic helper, a common occupation for many young women of that time. Her father Antonio was proud of his three daughters who, as they matured, began to be noticed by the young men of the town. He began to gather his savings for their dowries. His desire was that they find good homes and happiness in life. He kept close watch over them. Once he told his eldest daughter, Ursula, about a young man named Andrea, who asked for her hand. His proposal comes to her like lightning, which parts the clouds and provokes Ursula's major decision. On a Sunday during the Mass, she looked at Andrea. She recorded the memory of it after 40 years as follows. After Mass, upon my return home, I experienced a sudden fear. Entering the house, I hurried to my room in which there was a beautiful statue of the Sacred Heart. I stood before the Sacred Heart of Jesus and told him, Lord, you alone are enough. I descended the stairs and went to my father to tell him that I will not accept Andrea's hand. Lord, you alone are enough, she gives her yes to him who had chosen her first and who from this moment onward will ask her to be the one and only one in her life.
in joy and sorrow, in health and sickness, in homeland and in exile. How this will take place, she did not know until one day she met Father Alviriol, the founder of the Poland family at a bookshop, where she had gone to purchase good books. Father Alvirione asked her, When are you coming to St. Paul's? On the same Saturday, she also met in the market her friend who worked in the factory, Upresina. Upresina had already decided to join Father Alberione, and she too invited her to join St. Paul's. When she broke the news of joining a religious community, her family opposed her strongly because it was not yet an established congregation. Rather, it was still in its initial stage. In spite of this, she succeeded in entering St. Paul's. She joined on 29th July 1922 at the age of 25, accompanied by her father. Father Alberione saw in her a mature young woman for the future mission and hands over to her the book, The Women of the Gospel, so that she could prepare herself for the purpose he had in mind. On November 21st, 1923, Father Alberione said in the community, Set aside Ursula and Matilda for a mission I will entrust to them. The project was not clear, yet he knew how to begin this work of the Spirit. When they asked what we will do, he replied with a triple command, Observe, silence, 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 as if to say, you must listen, listen, listen to the Lord's message. On February 10th, 1924, on the feast of Saint Scholastica, she was chosen by the founder, Father Alberione, to begin the congregation of the pious disciples of the Divine Master, along with eight members. On 25th March, the feast of the Annunciation, she made her first vows and received the name Scholastica of the Divine Providence. On the same day, she began the primary mission of the new congregation, the Eucharistic Adoration. The journey was difficult for the new community, yet they trusted in the Divine Providence for everything. She is our first mother. From now on, the life of Mother Scholastica and the life of the congregation of the pious disciples of the Divine Master goes simultaneously. The pious disciples developed, guided by Mother Scholastica. Under her able guidance, they managed to overcome many difficulties and maintain their identity as pious disciples of the Divine Master. Though juridically they were included in the approval of the daughters of St. Paul. During this time, they maintained their specific formation, Mother Scholastica being docile to the direct use of the founder, 
creatively continued to form the pious disciples according to the specific vocation and mission centered on the Eucharist, priesthood and the liturgy while awaiting the specific mission. The founder entrusted the work of the process of the canonical approval of the pious disciples to Blessed Timothy Jakardo, the first priest of the Society of St. Paul. In the meanwhile, Mother Scholastica organized liturgical activity which is specific to the pious disciples. She also made the total offering of herself to Jesus, the Divine Master. By now, the pious disciples were grown to be more than 300 members. She entrusted to Sister Lucia Ricci the direction of novices. Her dream was the recognition of the new congregation of the pious disciples in the church. So she visited all the houses of the pious disciples and met all the sisters in order to prepare the constitutions and the directives. The founder said to her, she should be like the foundation of the house which is not seen but holds the entire building with extraordinary virtues of humility, faith and surrender. On October 2nd, 1948, she was sent to Argentina, Buenos Aires, where she remained for 15 years. This was her second home. She never saw her father again. When she returned to Italy, she lived as a sister among the sisters, without calling attention to herself, leaving herself even to be humiliated at times. In this way, she continued to nourish the fledgling congregation in joyful surrender. She was the woman of great faith and brought the whole humanity to the Eucharist during adoration. She has met personally Pope Paul VI and Pope John Paul II. After the death of the founder, Blessed James Albirione in 1971, her Nostalgia for paradise increased and her health declined gradually. She was transferred to San Fre, where she would spend her last six years of life. In every situation of her life, she always said, Lord, you alone are enough. She died on March 24, 1987, as the community sang the Vespers of Annunciation of the Lord, contemplating Mary's S. The disciple Scholastica pronounces her final S on earth, ready and adorned to celebrate the eternal wedding with the Divine Master. The diocesan process for the beatification and canonization of the servant of God, Mother Scholastica, began on March 13, 1993 in Alba. She was proclaimed venerable on December 9, 2013. She is a special intercessor for Childless couples. Prayer to obtain graces through the intercession of Mother Venerable Mother Scholastica as follows. 
let us conclude with the prayer to Mother Scholastica. O oh Jesus, our soul master, way, truth and life, we praise and bless you for your disciple, Sister Mary Scholastica Arivata, sustained by the Holy Spirit with the strength of the Eucharist in the joys and sufferings of her daily life, she accepted the Father's will in the footsteps of Mary, your mother and ours. She offered herself joyfully in the service of God and her neighbor. May her example help us to choose the way of the gospel in every circumstances of our lives. Through her intercession, grant us the grace we ask. Amen.